Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm your host, Vago Maradian, and thanks for joining us for our weekly cyber report sponsored by Northrop Grumman. With the vast majority of the nation in lockdown to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, more people than ever are working from home, and that means more people than ever are on cloud-based services, whether for conferences or others like Zoom and other platforms. But these platforms are also vulnerable, driving the Pentagon to issue guidance not to download uncertified apps onto military computers or use non-secure services for official, especially sensitive business. Joining us to help explain the ins and outs of navigating this brave new world are Michael Specka, the president of Ardalist, an Annapolis, Maryland-based cybersecurity firm, and Josh O'Sullivan, a Navy veteran who's the company's chief technology officer. I should point out that we use Zoom so far successfully and safely to tape our podcasts, and Ardalist came to our attention through our producer, Chris Cervello, who's also a partner at a PR firm called Provision Advisors. One of his partners, one of his partners in the firm advises Ardalist. Michael and Josh, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Let's talk about the big picture advice that you guys are giving to clients, whether they're individuals or whether uh, they're companies. How do you need to think about the space uh, that we're in? Obviously, there's a Zoom bombing, which has become an issue. That's a little bit embarrassing. Then again, if you're password protected in your conversations, that should help. You know, so there's this tendency of sort of, you know, and, and we don't get anything from Zoom. It's not like they sponsor us or anything, but the service has been very uh, secure and successful for, for us. What are some of the rules of thumb folks have to bear in mind uh, as they navigate the whole, you know, work from home, login, distance services uh, universe? From a business perspective, I think one of the interesting things is that there are so many services available uh, and they all have various levels of uh, security built in. You know, one of the pieces of advice that we've always heard from the security community is to consider cybersecurity, you know, from the beginning of developing an application or uh, implementing a capability. And so there's a lot of business leaders out there that are worried about getting something in place fast. The fact of the matter is, is with today's cloud environment, it's not any more difficult to get something in place quickly and securely. All it really takes is executives and business leaders also prioritizing using secure platforms and including security decisions uh, from the beginning. So we're recommending to our customers this transformation that's being forced upon us, but that a lot of companies we're moving towards really should be part of a, uh, an overall program that includes understanding what threats are out there, um, picking platforms that help you meet your mission, but then also take those threats into account. So what should individuals be doing? What should organizations be doing to get on the, the right foot on this, Michael? I think one of the things that's interesting about this moment in time is that uh, as a nation, we're having to think like security providers. We're having to think about um, the relative values of, of different risks in a way that many of us don't day to day. And if there's anything I've learned uh, um, you know, working in this space in the last couple of years, it's that simply being conscious of those security choices makes a big difference. So for the average family, it's should we go to the grocery store today? Should we wear a mask? Do we, do we not need to wear a mask? These, these decisions are very similar to the decisions you're making with your technology. So do I, for example, get an expert to help me segment my network so that my kids playing video games is not the, uh, commingled with the same traffic that uh, I'm doing work, right? And I'm having uh, important conversations on um, you know, my systems. Do we share a computer? Do I use the same machine for uh, home business uh, or personal business and, and uh, my work? You know, having two devices, especially if your organization can provide you with one, is a best practice, for example. But take the risk seriously and just consider what, you know, not necessarily expensive and not necessarily difficult steps you can take to minimize the opportunity for an adversary to compromise your business through your home machine. And, and Josh, talk to us about sort of the big picture lessons here. You know, big, big picture right now, we've been talking about digital transformation uh, for a little while here as, as, a, as a community, what we're seeing right now is a real shift in, in terms of the has and have nots when it comes to digital transformation. We're seeing kind of a group of winners and losers right now because there's, there's the companies that chose to uh, take the leap of faith and digitize their organizations. And, and so 
as they've shifted to far more remote work, that platform has scaled with the demand. And uh, in those cases, they haven't missed a beat. There are other organizations in government, out of government, that focus more on a centralized solution, brought it all in first before it goes out. And the, rather than choosing a platform to scale on top of, they were just like what we, we with the dot-com days with, with, with virtualization being able to rapidly scale, there's this new scaling problem with the users themselves. And so uh, what happened? Well, they've run into bottlenecks, they've run into issues, they're now trying to rely on third-party software applications on, on completely different infrastructures. So we're trying to make it happen. And so f fundamentally, you know, that first lesson learned really comes down to scalability. There are those companies that did choose to digitize and, and they're the ones that are accelerating right now. The second part of that, to Michael's point there about how we build out segmentation, how we build out understanding, when it comes to trust, and we were, we were talking briefly about, you know, the challenges of how much do we, we you know, Zoom, for example, is the, the new conversation point, right? Uh, of the day, and you know, fundamentally, to what degrees can we trust Zoom? Right? Do we do we trust it at installing this application on your device? Do you trust it as dialing in with your plain old telephone and talking through it? And a lot of it depends. It depends on the data you're putting on it. It depends on the systems you're connecting to it. Although those different layers of abstraction are, in essence, abstracted, those details still matter from a security perspective. And so. The companies that understand that and are working then to instrument across those different layers. And that's where you start seeing words like zero trust in terms of trying to build in uh, authorization and authentication at every layer of the, of the network stack. Guys, thanks very much for joining us. Stay safe and hope we can talk again in the future. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This has been great. And thanks for joining us. Please follow our daily interviews with top government, military, industry, and thought leaders at Defense and Aerospace Report and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Follow us on Twitter at Def Aero Report. That's at D-E-F-A-E-R-O Report. Like us on Facebook at Defense and Aerospace Report. And check us out on LinkedIn. And check out our weekly cyber report sponsored by Northrop Grumman and our technology report sponsored by General Motors Defense. For more than 80 years, Bell has pushed past the boundaries of what's possible to drive aviation forward, going above and beyond flight, bellflight.com. Thanks again to Bell for their generous sponsorship, and we'll see you again tomorrow.